My hope is that Riot continues on for many, many years and decades to come as a company that players can count on to have their back. We're really excited to see how people react and, and you know, we believe that there's an incredible opportunity to sort of make some player dreams come true in a bunch of new ways. Riot Games has had a complicated history with League of Legends lore, probably more so than any other game company with their IP. They have rehashed and retconned the continuity of their game's world countless times, and by countless I mean like two. But when you have a game that consists of like 200 characters, this becomes a problem because once you're trying to update the continuity of old characters to new characters, and you're trying to tie in old character, oh wait, I just said that. You're trying to tie in these new characters with the older characters and trying to get everything updated to the current lore, you have these giant Swiss cheese holes in the continuity. You start getting these older characters that just don't fit in with the game they don't have a place in the game they don't make sense and usually a character has like a sort of archetype role that they fill but then you start having like these overlaps where okay well when we update this old champion we can't put them in the archetype they were originally intended for because now somebody fills that role like i stated before riot has changed the entire lore structure two times so we have three eras of lore continuity, and I think it's important to kind of explore each of those eras. You have era one, which I like to call the, I don't know, I guess this works, whatever era. Era two, the, all right, maybe let's try a little bit harder era. And then the third and current era, we're a multi-billion dollar company, let's fucking act like it era. Era 1 was comprised of releasing champions who were just random archetypes that they threw together into the game because it needed these archetypes. Some of the characters like Ash were just reskinned Warcraft 3 units. Most of the champions had nonsensical lore that had loose ends that would never get tied up or just was never explained. An example of this would be Annie being a part of the, something called the Grey Coven. And then Jax's whole thing was him purple. Also in this era, the entirety of the game had a lore basis that it was a giant sporting event that city-state factions would use to solve diplomatic disputes as opposed to going to war. So you as a player was a summoner and you were tasked with summoning a champion from an organization called the Institute of War and they were your avatar and you played this sporting event and whatever side won, won the diplomatic dispute. The concept of the Institute of War itself was pretty archaic. It was supposed to be this Justice League of the world's greatest champions, but already in this era, it didn't even make sense because you had these eldritch horror abominations like Cho'Gath, whose entire thing was he just wanted to eat the Earth's crussy. This has been completely written out of the lore. It doesn't exist anymore, and it, it shouldn't, and it really couldn't if you think about it because now you have champions like Jin who are serial killers. And so could you imagine like a scenario where, I don't know, like the Justice League is just hanging out and uh, Jeffrey Dahmer walks in and he's like, hey, can I get an application? Back in the early days of League of Legends, this concept was a pretty big deal. They even held an event once upon a time where two factions, Ionia and Noxus, were facing off over a dispute over land and, and what's been conquered. And they selected 10 players to play out this game, and each team represented one of the other factions, and whoever won would shape the lore of the world at that time. This is still reflected today as an item was released in celebration of Ionia winning, and we still have that item in the game with a little note about it. Also at this time there was an in-game newspaper newsletter daily that you would get that was called the Journal of Justice that helped expand the lore and kind of showed what was going on outside of the game and mostly served to kind of show interactions between the champions. Like I think at this time they were really pushing a ship between Garen and Katarina. But 
this Journal of Justice also had like really strange implications, like the ride employee who wrote it writing in that he was dating one of the female champions, which was kind of strange. But as time went on, they started kind of trying to think like, well, we need to be a little bit more professional with the way that we handle the lore. We need to rewrite some stuff. We need to kind of update some people. We need to start making a couple of changes. And during this era, there started they started putting out these champions that had way better looking models compared to the first run of champions models who had like these giant feet and these weird proportions. So when they decided to update the champions from the old models to kind of the newer models they decided to kill two birds with one stone and say well we can also sort of update their lore to kind of seem like it fits in better with what we're doing now so the blend between era one and era two was kind of incremental it it sort of meshed together because they were kind of ever changing it like the lore was still really weird and not very good if i remember correctly champions like ramus and wukong were just random animals that touched a magic rock and then they became who they were and then that was their lore they they also had a cop-out tactic where if it seemed like a champion didn't fit into the lore, they just wrote into his lore that, oh, they came from another world, and then that was it. There was no explanation. Master Yi's original lore just straight up said he was an alien, like he came from space. Now, Era 3 is a lot different in its transition than Era 1 to 2. Era 3 was just, they dropped it out of nowhere and hey, the old lore doesn't matter anymore, none of it makes sense, this is the new lore. No longer was the world map just a shitty paper map that had random places that were never mentioned or visited or seen scribbled on it. Now it was a concise 3D map, you could see where everything was, each thing had a little bit of a story and a background to it, they weren't just placeholders, they were now officially things that you could see and had backstories with these characters that were tied into it. These legends were starting to leak, you know, like this was not Pee Wee Baseball anymore. This was now a multi-billion dollar company that had worldwide recognition and worldwide tournament events that were comparable to actual sporting events and numbers and views. They weren't holding tournaments in the back rooms of a Babbage's. Now they're selling out the fucking Staple Center. So they were like, yeah, maybe this shit should make just a little bit more sense. And to some degree, it does. It's way more concise. There's a lot more story going on. They have a series with Arcane. They've produced other games, which, you know, like uh, the Ruined King RPG, which, you know, expands the lore even more. But... That doesn't mean that everything is fixed. That doesn't mean that everything is honky-dory and good. There are still some major problems. Right now, the problem that Riot is facing is still taking some of these older champions and kind of giving them a new coat of paint and moving them into the current continuity. And they do this every once in a while. They have a roadmap that shows what champions are getting worked on next, how much they're getting worked on, if they're getting remade from the ground up, if they're just updating their lore, if they're just updating their VFX. And some of the older champions have made a graceful reappearance in the new continuity. They look fantastic, their lore is really good, but some of them not so much, and some of them not at all. They haven't even been touched. This is where we enter that delightful little scamp that everybody loves. Shaco, or Shaco, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Shaco. Shaco, maybe? Like Shaquille O'Neal? Shaco is an absolute anomaly as far as League of Legends consistency and lore goes. There is no other champion like him in regards to the way that he is written and the way that he is presented. Shaco was a year one release champion. That means he was not necessarily one of the starter champions, but he was absolutely there in the beginning of the game. As of writing and recording this in 2022, League of Legends is 13 years old, which means that Shaco is 13 years old. And in those 13 years, they have not done anything with him. Now, once upon a time, they were doing waves of old champions, getting their textures updated to kind of be a little bit more HD and not look as bad. He got one of those. And I think within the past year, he got a VFX update, which means that like his particle abilities and stuff look a little bit different. 
Also at one time, there was an LCS player that used to do this thing called Illuminati Shaco, where he would put his traps down in a triangle and then bait people to come into the triangle to die. And they kind of incorporated that into his ult whenever his clone dies. So that was a change too. But when I say they haven't touched him, I mean like lore wise. Originally, he was like a serial killer clown that was an assassin who the police couldn't catch and he just did whatever he wanted to do and people thought he was like an ultimate being of chaos. How about a magic trick? They've since removed that and as of currently, he has like one paragraph to his name and that's it just a little chunk of text the demon jester shako now let me stop here real quick before i even get into it they call him the demon jester but they make it pretty clear through the wiki that he is not in fact a demon in current lore there are demons but he's just not one of them just already off to a great fucking start crafted long ago as a plaything for a lonely prince the enchanted marionette Shaco now delights in murder and mayhem, corrupted by dark magic and the loss of his beloved charge. What the fuck's a charge? Is that supposed to be like the prince? Like, am I stupid? Is that another word for prince or like a leader? The once kind puppet finds pleasure only in the misery of the poor souls he torments. He uses toys and simple tricks to deadly effect. Finding the results of the bloody games hilarious. And for those who hear a dark chuckle in the dead of night, the demon jester may have marked them as his next plaything. So he's supposed to just be a puppet that came to life and he's pissed off because his owner died or left or is gone. So already thematically that doesn't even make sense with Shaco in the game because there's nothing about him that implies that he is a puppet or a toy or anything. One of his abilities is he puts down Jack in the boxes as a trap, but that doesn't have to necessarily mean that he's a toy because I mean like Jinx has little traps out of those little chattering teeth and she's not a toy. And then you have another example of a champion who is a puppet or toy that came to life and that's Gwen and her entire thematic centers around that. She can even turn into a doll with one of her taunts. So earlier I mentioned the roadmap that they use to show characters and champions that they're going to work on. And this roadmap goes like well into like the next year, sometimes two years with like a list. That was my phone. But yeah, this list that goes on for quite some time in advance doesn't have Shaco on it. They don't plan on giving him a lore update, a visual update, an overhaul, any of that stuff. And I think he could really benefit from that. I think he could really do well in the current continuity as long as they put him there. But as he stands now, he has, he doesn't even make sense. There's, I don't know, it's just, it's stupid. The issue is that if they do do some kind of update or an overhaul, you run the risk of him just being a worse champion. And this has happened before, in my opinion. I, I used to really love playing old Nunu back when he looked wonky and stupid. He was so fun to play, but I don't know. New 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 just doesn't really have that punch that the old one did. Unless it's an Earth. If it's an Earth, he's really fun. When I say this, I mean his kit and his gameplay. I think thematically and design-wise, this is the best rework they've ever done. There's some people over on ArtStation who've done really cool rework designs for him, like uh, like fan rework designs, where he looks really cool and they really lean more into the puppet aspect, which I guess they could do. I mean, we do have Gwen filling that role, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to have multiple of the same kind, I guess. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of interesting. I wanted to bring it up and talk about it. Um, I, I, personally, for me, I don't know what they could really do. I don't, I don't really have a solution for this. Just, I don't know, make it make sense, I guess. Flesh it out a little bit more. Um, give him some better voice lines other than this. Why so serious? So, I don't know. I guess my final thought is just fix this fucking guy.